Hello everyone, I am Shagun and I am going to present the final project for class pattern recognition. The topic of my project is a decentralized and personalized spam filter which is based on social computing. This is the outline for my presentation and it shows the topics that I will be covering through while going through this presentation. So first let us have a brief introduction. Emails have always been a famous tool for both personal and professional communications because of their simplicity and cost effectiveness. For the same reasons, it is popular among spammers too because they have very low cost which is attached with one email. Spam is one of the most critical problems faced by social networks and internet today. The spam epidemic started in the early 1990s and has grown exponentially each year. So what are spam mails? They are the unsolicited commercial emails which is sent in bulk mainly for the purposes of advertisements. Currently 120 billion spams are sent per day and there has been a study which shows that 90% of emails sent in 2006 were spam. Now they have a huge overhead of cost and bandwidth which is worked that the enormous bandwidth could otherwise be used for transmission of useful information. Also, with such bulk data flowing through a telecommunication line, there can be an unwanted delay which can cause the transmission of useful and legitimate emails to slow down. Now let us discuss that what does a spam filter do? So with the problems that have been discussed, it becomes important to separate between spam and legitimate mails. There have been many approaches to design an effective, attack-resistant, personalized and user-friendly spam filter. Now a spam filter is a computer program that helps in classifying email messages and determining with high probability whether or not a message is spam. Here are some screenshots that I've attached showing the robustness of spam filters used by Facebook and Google. So here it can be seen that Facebook reads through the contents of your comments and if it finds it inappropriate, it would not allow you to publish it on the social network. For this graph, it shows the robustness of Gmail spam filter technique. The number of spam mails are shown by the red curve and it is continuously increasing. As the amount of spam has increased, Gmail users have received less of it in their inbox, reporting a rate less than 1%, which is shown by this blue line. Now let us talk about some existing approaches. For the source-based method, there is a technique called black-white list. In this approach, the reputation of the IP address is judged from where the spam mail was generated. There is another method called the content-based method, where a static keyword list is used to train the filter. However, it becomes trivial for the spammers to evade filtering because of the fixed static characteristics of the keyword list. Google also uses an optical character recognition to analyze the text in an image and filter the message accordingly. Now I'll talk about social network, which is the main modification to the existing Bayesian technique of spam filtering. So social networking websites like Facebook have been an integral part of our life today. Through these websites, we remain in touch with our friends and people who have alike interests. Social networks are extensively formed by graphs that have millions of connected links. And whenever I am a friend with someone, there is this direct adjacent node where I am sharing a link. Social networks can help us to form groups or communities with people who have alike interests or disinterests as the user himself. Pushing spam reports over the social network can help in training of the spam filter as it can become very cumbersome if we start dealing with individual spam mails. Now let's see what is a basic Bayesian spam filter. So using the Bayesian filter is a popular approach to distinguish between spam and legitimate emails and it is also one of the widely used machine learning techniques. It applies the Bayes theory to identify spam and mathematically it is given by these two equations. Here PS and PL represent the probability that an email is spam or legitimate. 
The Bayesian filter passes each of the collected emails into a series of keywords which are denoted by W. PW by S and PW by L are the probabilities calculated by the Bayesian filter showing the occurrences of keyword W given an email is spam or legitimate. PSW represents the probability that an email with a series of passed keywords is spam. After the computations, this result PS given W is compared to threshold set by the Bayesian filter. If PS given W is greater than the threshold, then this email is sent to the spam folder, otherwise it is sent to the user's inbox. Here I'll be discussing the advantages and disadvantages of the Bayesian technique. So first let us go through the advantages. The first advantage is that it can be trained on a per user basis, which means it is dynamic. With sophisticated training, the filter will automatically assign a higher probability based on the specific patterns of user. Also, with a predefined list of keywords, the filter will assign a lower probability of legitimacy to contents that have occurrences of those words that were there in the keywords for the spam. Bayesian training is an evolving technique and it is not fixed. Here are the disadvantages. So the Bayesian filter may be susceptible to Bayesian po poisoning where spammers attempt to trick the filter and degrade its performance. For that, bulk spam mails can be sent with large amounts of legitimate text to confuse the filter. Also, rare words can be sent in the content where these rare words are the words that were not encountered in the learning phase. Bayesian filter cannot read images and hence the filter can be poisoned if images replace text in spam mails. Here is the system architecture. So first an email is received. On the basis of its contents, email information is generated and examined and it is compared against the local spam lists. If during this initial stage, certain keywords have more occurrences than a specific threshold value, then it is moved to the Bayesian detection layer. Otherwise, if certain spam words are used but the value is below threshold, then this email is sent to the junk folder for the user to determine its validity and then send its ultimate destination. Once it is in the Bayesian filter, it is checked whether it is spam or not on the basis of the training of the filter. If this is spam, then it is again moved to the junk folder, else it is put in the user's inbox. Now we will be seeing the scenario here where a friend from the social network pushes a spam report. Once a spam report is received from the social network, the content is compared against the information present in local spam list. If this information is already present in the prior list, then this received report can be ignored as there was nothing new observed from it that can be used to improve the performance of filter. However, if there are variations observed, then it is checked whether any email with similar content was sent to the inbox of the user. If it was sent, then the new information is stored for further improving the separation mechanism of the filter. Again, if this email was not sent to the inbox, then it is sent to the junk folder for the user to decide whether his individual interests match with the interest of his social network or not. If yes, then it is sent to the spam, otherwise sent to the inbox. So what is an interest-based spam filter? Whenever a user receives a spam report from the network, the system will extract its information and put it in the local spam list. Local interest lists contain the information about the interests and disinterests of user that are collected during the training phase of the filter. The system calculates the interest similarity between the user and his friends and these are compared with the interest similarity threshold set by interest-based spam filter. Spam reports are pushed if this value exceeds the threshold. Here I'll be talking about the simulations and evaluations. So let there be a user U and he has N friends in his social network that can be represented as a set from F1 to Fn and their corresponding interests are from I1 to In. So first all interest similarities are calculated and they are compared against the threshold. So for gaining diversities in results and better understanding, 
I chose my network of friends to be from 5, 10, 15 and 20 and the values for similarity thresholds were taken to be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 and 0.4. Here are the simulation results. So this first graph shows how a Bayesian filter is not so much good in performance as compared to a filter that uses social computing. So social computing has its performance about somewhere around 95% where Bayesian filter is somewhere around 91%. The second graph shows the accuracy rate when the average number of friends increase. So as you can see, the number of average friends increase causes the accuracy rate to go high. These numbers at the side shows the values for the threshold. The lower the threshold, more accuracy will be achieved and the highest accuracy is at this point where I have the maximum number of friends in my group and the least threshold. For this graph, there is comparison between unidirectional and bidirectional reports. Unidirectional reports are when I send my spam report to the social network and bi-directional reports are those where I send both spam and legitimate reports to the network. In conclusion, I would like to say that Bayesian filter is an integrated and personalized spam filter, but it can increase its performance if we use the social network also. As shown in simulations, the performance is as high as 94.5%. However, the only limiting factor of this implementation is that in the practical world, it is quite likely that different people will have different interests. So this can be a cause that the filter does not perform to its maximum capabilities. Overall, I will conclude that while spam filters are effective enough to be useful for their intended purposes, there is still much room for improvement. I would like to extend my sincere thanks to our professor Dr. Dipangu for class pattern recognition. His valuable guidance and well-explained class lectures and lecture notes played a crucial role in understanding the basic concepts which were also used in the implementation of this project. Now I would like to go to the code that was written in MATLAB and I extracted it from the public domain. So here is a keyword list of 40 different words and they have been assigned token values depending on how likely they are to occur in a spam mail. For example, the word shopper has a very low probability as compared, so it has a very high probability as compared to something like clearance, which has a low probability. Also, I would like to show you the code for the spam filter. So here is the code for spam filter where I request the user to input a message. In that message on the basis of the keywords, we see that if those keywords were there on the spam list, then the message has a very high probability of going to the spam. I would run this code. It asks me to enter a message. So I let me write insurance. In my keyword list, I put insurance as a keyword so that it should be sent to spam. It asked me for the domain of the email address and let me write some random email address. It asked me for the time and the year in which it is sent and it shows that it is probably spam. Let me give you the reasons for that. So first of all, insurance word was there in the spam keyword list. The second of all, the email address is something else except the .edu domain. But for my code, I wrote that the, for .edu only, I have a one whereas that this is not a spam. And as in that, the things can be spam. Also, for this time, it is shown that a lot of spams are sent in the time domain of 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. and I chose 10 p.m. So for the year, this factor is important because spams are mostly sent with an email with an year of as high as 2030. So but I entered 2010. So even this parameter was favorable. Still, it showed me that this is probably spam. So hence, I would like to conclude my work that spam filters are basic are one of the technologies that should be given a huge research so that there is a lot of bandwidth and cost 
which is being wasted can be saved. Thank you.